Hello, my name is Dr. Alec Megabo. I will be talking to you today on the topic if radiation dose can be reduced using dual energy CT. My disclosure is that I am a consultant for Bracco Diagnostics. And a technical disclosure, all of the experience related in this talk is from dual source dual energy scanner technology with dose referring to dose indices. Next slide. Dual energy CT is not a new idea. Dr. Hounsfield already thought that in his original paper, the atomic number of a material could be determined if that material could be scanned at two different KVs. So since the inception of CT, dual energy was thought to be a marked advance. Next slide. In 2013, dual energy CT is a clinical reality because we can acquire simultaneously, not twice, we can acquire an entire volume. There's no misregistration. The tube technology supports uh, high quality images and the dose it can be neutral if not lower. Next slide. So one thing to remember is that with dual source dual energy CT, although there are two tubes that are traversing the patient, the radiation given is shared between the tubes so that the total amount of radiation per rotation is approximately the same as with single energy CT conventional acquisitions. Next slide. There are two ways that dual energy CT can decrease radiation dose. The first is by eliminating acquisitions, and this is particularly of interest with the virtual non-contrast images. And the second may be inherent properties of the dual source dual energy application itself, and we'll explore in detail both of these uh, aspects. Next slide. So the ability to reduce unnecessary acquisitions was already described in terms of the ability to save radiation in this article that appeared in JACR. Next slide. And therefore, it is really beholden on us to try to do everything to reduce radiation dose and eliminate unnecessary acquisitions. If we can get a free open quote non-contrast close quote or virtual non-contrast acquisition, we could eliminate an entire pass through the patient. But in order to rely on that virtual non-contrast, we have to assume that the values are true uh, and that the iodine removal is accurate. Next slide. So how does this work? If we are looking to remove contrast from the renal cortex, as you see here, um, the scanner reads the contribution of both 140 and 80 kV pixels and maps it onto a zone of, of Hounsfield units based on fixed values of fat and tissue and the variable that we want to remove, which is iodine. From here, we can project a line which actually gives us the iodine content of that particular uh, lesion, and this can be easily determined and the iodine can be removed. Similarly, in the same image, if we wanted to remove the iodine in the aorta, you see that the iodine projects at a much higher Hounsfield unit value, both at 140 and at 80 kV, and a different value would be obtained and the iodine in the aorta can be selectively removed as well, ending up with a true non-contrast image based on iodine. So how can this help us? Here's a patient who was sent to our department for abdominal pain. This is a dual energy CT scan and there are four different image types in the upper left there's a virtual non-contrast, the upper right a linear blended, in the lower left an optimally blended, and in the lower right an iodine map. And what you can see is that there's a complex process going on in the upper pole of the right kidney. You'll notice that there is a dense uh, region of enhancement which subtracts on the virtual non-contrast. This is a pseudoaneurysm, and there are varying densities within this, allowing a single pass diagnosis of a bleeding angiomyolipoma. On the next slide, the angiogram confirms all of the findings that were seen on the dual energy CT. This angiogram was performed for therapeutic purposes. So 
without doing a non-contrast and then contrast CT, we could actually eliminate an entire acquisition and thereby reduce the radiation dose. Here's another example um, where you see on a image from a dual energy CT urogram, here on the urographic phase, it looks like there's contrast in the upper pole of the right kidney, but on a true non-contrast image, um, this actually turns out to be a stone, and then appearing just later is a virtual non-contrast image. Again, you see the stone. The total DLP for three phases is 1350 milligrade per centimeter. The total DLP for two phases with the virtual non-contrast is 1065 milligrade per centimeter, approximately a significant dose reduction by eliminating the non-contrast scan. Next slide. Just another example of a CT urogram and a virtual non-contrast showing a relatively small calculus in the lower pole of the um, left kidney. Next slide. Can we rely on the CT numbers? We know from our uh, experience that documenting changes in Hounsfield units in response to iodinated contrast is really a pillar of CT diagnosis. So what we did, next slide, is on 68 dual energy CT urograms with the patient populations listed below, we looked at, uh, and our standard technique, next slide, we created virtual non-contrast images from the nephrographic phase and the urographic phase and we placed region of interest cursors in the liver, renal cortex, spleen, and aorta on true non-contrast and the two virtual non-contrasts from the different phase of enhancement. Next slide. Um, here you can just see a schematic of what we did where you can see the region of interest cursors placed on different regions within the um, two different phases, both on the true non-contrast, the nephrographic, and the urographic. Uh, virtual non-contrast images. And then we compared the numbers. So here you can see, just looking at the mean Hounsfield units between the true non-contrast, virtual uh, non-contrast, and in the nephrographic and urographic phase on this graph, which is on the next slide, you can see that there is not a large difference in mean Hounsfield unit values either in the liver, the kidney, the aorta, or the spleen. There is a trending that the values on the virtual non-contrast compared to true non-contrast will be higher when the iodine content in the area of interest is higher, but not too, um, but not too different. Next slide. Here are the results just looking at the mean st and standard deviations um, between the true non-contrast and the virtual non-contrast in the nephrographic phase, in the urographic phase, and between the two um, virtual non-contrasts. And you can see the mean differences in all organs at all phases is actually quite low, even though there is a statistically significant difference. If we go a little bit further with this data, next slide, um, and just look at how often we have discrepant Hounsfield unit measurements. If we use a threshold of 10 Hounsfield units below which uh, any difference is unacceptable, you can see there's quite a bit higher discrepancy than if we use a 20 Hounsfield unit um, threshold of concordance between true and virtual non-contrast uh, numbers. Next slide. These small differences do not really achieve statistical significance in our department. In fact, we use 20 Hounsfield units as a threshold by which we determine whether a lesion enhances or not. Um, but if we added a little more rigor to the virtual non-contrast at 15 Hounsfield units, we would get very close approximation to true non-contrast numbers. And this agrees with other published studies that are listed below. Next slide. So we can rely on the CT numbers. They do approximate reality. What about dose reduction itself in terms of the inherent properties of the dual energy acquisition? Next slide. <clears throat> in our experience, in particularly in cancer patients who had come from multiple studies, sometimes being done 
dual energy sometimes being done uh, on a single energy system, we noticed systemically that there was usually a decreased dose index on a dual energy scan as shown on the left compared with single energy scans as, as shown on the right. And you can see the difference in this case. Uh, the DLP is 583 as opposed to 614 on single energy. Next slide. Here's another example of a case where on single energy, which is now on the left, the DLP is 582. Dual energy, the DLP is 469. These are fairly substantial differences in the dose indices, and I would argue that the image quality here is certainly acceptable, at least in the two examples that I just showed you. <clears throat> to look at this a little more Rigorously, we looked at 166 patients, 83 of whom were scanned with a uh, single energy, 83 on a dual energy scanner. The reference CTDI VAL was matched on both scanners. Um, the patient sizes as measured at the AP diameter at the iliac crest was really pretty similar in both groups. In these groups, we compared the CTDI, the noise contrast to noise, uh, and signal to noise ratios. Next slide. And here is the data. If you look at the dual energy, the mean CTDI vol in the patient study there, 9.81. The mean CTDI vol on single energy, 12.61, with some changes, uh, which actually achieve statistic significance. Next slide. There were some changes. Uh, in terms of noise, but the mean CTDI was 24% lower on dual energy than on single energy in this patient population. There was slightly higher noise, slightly lower contrast to noise, and a slightly lower signal to noise ratio, but we did not use iterative reconstruction in this particular patient population. Here are just some examples of cases that we did using iterative reconstruction. We can improve the image quality. Uh, here the total DLP for a two-phase CT urogram of this quality is 517 milligray per centimeter. I think these are fairly acceptable numbers. Um, so by eliminating the true non-contrast as well as by having decreased uh, dose indices with the dual energy acquisition, we could actually get to quite low values. Another example here uh, on a CT enterography, here uh, in this particular patient uh, on dual energy, the DLP for this abdomen and pelvis CT in this patient with Crohn's disease, 261 compared with a DLP of 353 in this same young patient. So there's clearly preserved image quality um, with radiation dose savings. One of the reasons for this, because we're using the 80 kV tube, there's probably a limitation in the total, uh, in the beam. Um, maybe our single energy acquisitions are too high. Um, so we underwent and did an image quality assessment. Next slide. Um, in order to do this, we looked at 25 random patients scanned with single energy, another 25 with dual energy, uh, and then we had another set of scans where noise was artificially introduced into single energy scans to simulate low dose uh, dual energy. Again, no denoising with three readers. Here's the result of those studies. Uh, next slide, the, uh, the scans were scored on a continuous line from zero to 10. Uh, and then they were asked to look at the sharpness, contrast, and brightness. Um, and the statistics are given below. Next slide. We gave the readers three reference cases of the worst, a medium, and the best uh, image that they could possibly see, and we asked them to score the cases as such. Here is the result on the next slide. Um, you can see that all three readers found the dual energy scans in this exercise uh, less uh, acceptable than the others, but none of them were diagnostically impaired. They would read any of these scans. So, and uh, if you look at the image quality, comparing uh, single energy, dual energy, um, that the dual energy had a lower but not unacceptable image quality near the median value, a little better on single energy, and you can see the other indices uh, are described further uh, on this particular slide. 
there was slightly less uh, sharpness, brightness, and contrast on the, sing on the dual energy as compared to the single energy acquisitions, which did achieve statistic significance in all uh, measurement parameters. There was some lack of agreement here. It was sort of a moderate kappa in terms of inter-reader agreement. Next slide. However, despite this, we are able to still achieve diagnostically acceptable images at low dose. So in this patient who was sent in for a renal stone study to our emergency room, you can see the total DLP is 275 milligray on this scan. The patient was thought to have an extra renal pelvis and a CT urogram was uh, requested. We decided to do this as a single pass CT urogram only in the urographic phase. Next slide. Here are those images. So we have a virtual non-contrast, a MIP, a, and two blends of the uh, um, MPR data in this patient. You can see the total DLP is reduced compared with the single energy scan now is 184. This, is a, this would come out to an effective dose of less than three millisieverts. So again, using iterative reconstruction, removing uh, the true non-contrast, uh, we have diagnostically excellent scans uh, at a very low radiation dose. So in summary, dual source, dual energy CT can reduce radiation dose by eliminating true non-contrast images. Um, I didn't have time to talk about renal calcification, but there, are, there is a decreased ability to subtract smaller calcifications, less than three millimeters from surrounding iodine, but stones of this size are probably not clinically relevant. Um, it's a reliable way of looking at contrast enhancement and gives us comfort in eliminating one acquisition in our normal CT. Um, it does operate at lower dose indices with a slightly less image quality than traditional single energy images, but overall the lower dose and other dual energy capabilities probably outweigh above. Thank you for your attention.